all welcome to uncommon gigs myself asant i hope you all doing well this is a continuation of our videos on closure where we already discussed the basics of closure the classic counter dilemma and some q and a on the basics of closure this video will try to discuss some advanced questions on closure so if you have not watched my previous videos on closure i'll try to add the link somewhere on the screen also on the description description section please go ahead and watch those videos only if you watch those videos this section becomes easy so where i'll be asking some complex questions on closure so without wasting further time let's get started so the question number 1 uh, an easy question uh, where this is actually a self invoking uh, function okay uh, if you have understood my previous video where i have explained the self invoking function this question is quite straightforward and you'll be able to answer it okay so where uh, we have created if you already know the answer just by looking at it you can pause the video put that in comment section question number 4 and your answer if not let me just uh, give a quick walk through of the question so we have one function called test a which is self invoking function so you, uh, you you know self invoking function is those function that doesn't need any external invocation they get executed by themselves they are mainly used to create a closure so test a is getting invoked inside which you have another function that is getting returned which is test b okay and inside which we are basically triggering the we are uh, logging the value of a okay so question remain the same so and you are you are calling the uh, self invoking function from invoking function 1 from here and 2 from here and you are passing the argument 0 and 1 so in line number 4 will you be able to access the value of a or not so just think about it it is not just the normal closure thing it is actually having self invoking function i want you to check it in detail and guess the output okay so and only if you are able to answer this question this question assume that you have a pretty good hold on closure if not you may have to still practice further to understand the properties of closure okay let me execute it so we are getting zero that means whatever the value of zero you passed so what ha what happening i'll do a do a dry run so in line number 6 you are passing zero so this a becomes zero and this block got executed this outer block got executed okay and the inner block which is returning the function b so b is getting triggered from here so it is having the value of 1 okay and in line number 4 we are as soon as it self invoking function the inside the block gets executed so it will be blocking the value of a which is 0 so the a which was a part of the outer function can be accessed in a function due to a property of closure so this so value of a in line number 4 is actually 0 so a is accessed inside here so this is a good example for closure okay this is this is very simple question uh, only if you understood the closure property very well you will be able to answer it okay now we'll go to the second question this is a classic question okay you might have seen it in multiple places okay Uh, but still many will not be able to answer this question or they will not be able to answer it correctly so that is the reason i picked this question okay so basically you are invoking a function called test here and inside which you have created a for loop and inside which you have a timeout set timeout for those of you who don't know what is timeout basically set timeout is used for making an asynchronous task so if you want to perform a task after a particular time interval then you specify the time interval here and perform the task here 1000 stands for 1 minute 1 second so where it is 1 second is equal to 1000 millisecond okay so set timeout is getting formed here and you are logging the value of i so if you know the value uh, output of it please do mention that in the comment section okay if not uh and let me let me give a quick walk through of the question and let us predict the output so you are calling the test and inside which we have a for loop so this inside anything inside the for loop as you know will get executed as long as the condition is correct the condition will hold good for three times that is 0 1 and 2 then when i becomes 3 the condition will fail and uh, the for loop will be stopped so inside which so three timers are created for 1000 second that is 1000 millisecond or 1 second so we have a function here which gets executed after 1 second which prints the value of i okay so the first time whenever the set timeout is formed the value of i will be 0 second time it is 1 third time it is 2 straight forward correct so now whenever you log the you, the output the expected output is 0 1 and 2 okay let me execute it ha huh? we are not getting 0 1 and 2 instead we are getting 3 3 and 3 uh have you done some mistake yes the mistake is in the explanation and our our inability to understand the closure property correctly okay so just just to make this question quite tricky or what i'll do i'll make it zero so basically zero means you got the set timeout 
executed straight away do not wait for any any time okay so if i execute this still i am getting 333 so basically expectation was this set time out with a value of 0 it will execute immediately correct so whatever the zero here so basically the set time out is not waiting for anything we are not making it asynchronously we are making it synchronous sync try to make it synchronously execute immediately but still we are getting 333 so to solve this problem first we have to identify why we are getting 333 then we can figure out how to get 101 and 2 okay so if you come here we have created a variable with i okay so you all know variable created with var keyword will have a global scope if you not know what is global scope and how let and where and const are differ in the in the scope property you can watch my hoisting video i'll try to link somewhere on the screen also in the description box okay so here we have created a variable i which has a global scope so ins inside the entire block of the test we have only one variable that can be created with a value of i okay and we have a three set timers Uh, set time out or you can call also call it three timers which will expire after one second okay so there is uh, zero or one doesn't make sense because actually set time out whenever you write the set time out it will go it will become asynchronous block and the, only after main thread executes all the synchronous synchronous things it will come to the set time out so due to which whether it specify zero or 1000 in this example has no not much of a difference okay so here we have a function so what is happening three set timers or three timers getting created which will expire after one second this is a this is value property one every time whenever this set timer was created right it formed a closure or you can tell a egg or a nest okay that is formed and the value of i was bound inside this you can tell value of i was bound putting other way the reference to i the memory location of i okay then after the uh, was uh, after one second all the three timers will get expire and it look for the value of i so the reference of i was already there with the property of closure so at the moment i is actually since it's a global scope i points to 3 actually because it was 0 1 2 3 when 3 it got failed so in the memory location of i you would see a value of 3 so due to which after the time over is expired you are getting 3 3 3 all the i's pointing that i points to the same memory reference and we are getting 3 as an output how to solve this wasn't it's very straight forward you don't have to know any rocket science to solve this if you know the concept of let var and const you will be able to solve this so let unlike the var which is a global scope let has a block scope or in the, in the wherever the you define the scope for that inside only that it will be will be able to access it so in this case if you use let same thing happens three nests are formed but only difference is the value of i in all the three blocks will be unique they all point to different memory location so first time it will be zero second time it will be one third time it will be two i becomes three but that i is different than all these three okay all these three uh, x or nests that are formed which enclosed the i with, within them so due to which if you execute now you will see zero one and two so there is another tricky question which generally asked in this topic is we have you have to use var itself because there are still browsers which are like uh, it doesn't support es 2016 where let and const are introduced so how do you support those browsers the easiest answer for that is you form a function okay let's name it test2 it takes uh, an argument of j and will enclose this block inside this and we trigger test2 and pass the value of i let me execute it then i'll explain what is happening okay uh, test to j so here i'm making it j if i execute 0 1 into got it right so what happens is whenever we have we are having a function what function does is uh, test to which is a function so it will be taking the value of i here and be passing to this test to so basically function forms again a closure so no matter whether you are using within using var or let inside this it's a function so function is having again a block scope this j every time that is a new j okay unlike the where, where this function was not there the value of var was all the different blocks are pointing to the same location doesn't happen here so inside the function block every time it's a different j okay so this is one of very classic problem and most interviews they still ask this and there is a variation of this that can be asked like i tried explaining all the common variation that are asked to me in the interview okay please do watch this video again if you not understood it and uh, practice them uh, by copying my project from the github okay thank you so much for watching my video if you would have liked my video please do like it on my youtube channel 
if you want your friends to get benefited please do share the video with them do not forget to subscribe to uncommon geeks my medium blogs my github projects are linked in the description follow me on medium read my articles there download project from the github url and uh, give a start to that project and practice the questions very thoroughly okay and uh, thank you so much for watching catch you in next video